So first I would like to thank the organizer for the organization of this beginning SEMRAX and for all this. <laughs> so I went uh, at, uh, at SEMRAX for the first time nearly 20 years ago and I was uh, there and I think I prefer to be in the audience than there today, <laughs> but still. So I will try to give you some... Um, so I will speak of some fluid structure interaction problems and I will try to give you some insights um, of what are the mathematical and numerical difficulties linked to this kind of problem and uh, what are also the link between the mathematical analysis, the proof of existence of weak of strong solution and the design of numerical scheme, accurate, stable numerical scheme. So my, my talk would be in two parts. The first one will be on the mathematical aspect for this kind of problem. And the second one will be on the numerical aspect. And we'll, I will try to, to show you that uh, mathematical aspect can uh, influence the numerical one and, and uh, respectively the numerical one can uh, give some hints on how to prove existence of solution. So, <clears throat> what are the motivations for studying this kind of problem? So, you have a lot of uh, physical phenomena where fluid structure interaction appears. So, where you have a fluid interacting with a structure, and uh, for instance, uh, <coughs> you have um, so the wind around an aircraft, so those are simulations by Serge Piperno. Uh, so here's, those are uh, in aerodynamics. So you have the, the wind that interacts with the wing, for instance. You may have also more complicated um, <coughs> problems where you have the, the air, the water, and the boat, and the sail. So those are uh, were done by the team of Alfio Quarteroni, and this was, I think, for um, America's Cup, and they win America's Cup because of this, those beautiful numerical simulations. So, no, I don't know if it was the case, but... Um, and those are from um, bio... Um, mechanical uh, applications. Uh, here you have uh, the blood in uh, an aortic valve, cardiac aortic valve. So <coughs> I am more interested in, in biofluid and uh, physiological um, uh, flows. So I, I will uh, focus mostly on, on, on th those kind of, of applications. So, you already um, uh, saw this image in the presentation of Alberto. So uh, this is a cut of the aorta, and you see the displacement field of the aorta wall. So, <coughs> uh, so you start from a physical uh, problem. You model it, so you have to know what are the rele relevant parameters, what are the re relevant unknown uh, for the purpose you are focusing on. So once you have your model, so those can be uh, PDEs, ODEs, coupled PDEs, nonlinear ones, and stuff like that. Uh, <coughs> as we are uh, some um, mathematician or uh, we, we study the, this problem from the mathematical point of view. This gives uh, us um, um, the frame in which we can perform uh, numerical analysis and uh, numerical simulation. 
So the second step will be the mathematical and numerical analysis of the problem in order to perform numerical schemes. So this, this is a numerical simulation on a really, really simple case, but if it doesn't work on this really, really simple case, it will not work on the more, more complex case, here patient-specific uh, geometry and blood flow and stuff like that. So you have to be sure that your numerical an, uh, algorithm is, is stable, uh, accurate, in order to uh, go from your model to numerical simulation and to compare it with uh, experimental data, for instance, and to make a, a loop if this model is not accurate enough, then you have to uh, go back to your model equation in order to enrich or change the model and change the parameter and stuff like that. So I will focus. So we had some insight from the lectures of Alberto um, on this part and on this one. And I will mostly focus on, on this one. So, <clears throat> and I will focus on this one by uh, presenting some really, really specific case. I will not cover uh, all the free structure interaction problems you may uh, find, uh, but I will focus on a specific one, a simple one, or not so simple, but um, in order to, to, to give you some, um, um, some idea on, on this kind of problem. So <clears throat> here what are, are the assumptions we, we will make? Uh, we will consider that the fluid is Newtonian. So as we saw in Alberto's lectures, uh, this is not really true for the blood. Uh, in particular in small vessels and stuff like that. So nevertheless, we will consider that the blood is a Newtonian flow. So that is viscous, uncompressible, and so we will consider the uh, Navier-Stokes system to describe the uh, velocity field and velocity pressure. For the structure, we have uh, an elastic media in large displacement because, as you saw in the um, in this movie, the displacement of the of the arterial wall is rather large. So we will consider um, <coughs> large displacement. So we can consider. Uh, uh, a thick wall uh, modeled by the 3D elasticity or, or, or reduced model in order to model the, the evolution of the displacement of, of, of the wall, such as shell or plate models and stuff like that. And those, uh, these two um, equations, so the fluid equation and the structure equation, are coupled uh, at the interface between the fluid and the structure, and uh, this coupling has two, two um, takes two forms. Um, first, we have the equality of the velocity uh, at the interface, since we have assumed that the fluid is viscous, it, it, it sticks to the boundary. So you have equality of the velocity, and you have also the action-reaction principle that states that the uh, normal component of uh, the stress tensor are equal at the interface, so that the force applied by the fluid on the structure is equal to the force applied by the structure on the fluid. And <coughs> uh, from, from those two coupling conditions, what we will see is that we have an energy balance at the interface, so that the power of the fluid at the interface is equal to the power of the structure and the interface. And it will be a, a key issue uh, from the mathematical point of view uh, as well of, as from the numerical point of view. Because from the numerical point of view, what we... Uh, um, a good scheme... Uh, a good scheme 
will preserve this energy balance at the interface. Shall preserve. So, for the fluid part, here you have the Navier-Stokes system. So, U is the fluid velocity, rho f is the fluid density. We will assume rho f to be a constant. Um, nu is the viscosity and P is the pressure. So, you have the Navier-Stokes equation, which is non-linear because of this convection term. U is divergent free because we have assumed that the fluid is incompressible. And those equations are, are set in a domain, omega eta of t. So the configuration we, we will consider in the lecture is the following. So we will consider a really simple case where you have a 2D fluid, so omega, so here you have the fluid. Here you have a rigid boundary. Here you have <coughs> one inlet and one outlet. And here you have an elastic um, a structure that can move in the transverse uh, direction or in the uh, longitudinal one. So here, I will call this, I don't remember. So here is stigma, the interface between the fluid and the structure. So uh, you have a deformation. So you assume that you have some external forces applied to this system, or that you have some fluid entering uh, gamma in and uh, coming out there. And so the, the structure will uh, uh, you have a displacement of the structure and it will define a new domain, which is the deformed domain, omega eta of t. So here, in this one, I consider that the longitudinal displacement is equal to, to zero, that you have only a vertical displacement of, of the of the elastic boundary. So the fluid equations are set in this deformed domain. Since the fluid equations are set in Eulerian coordinates. And so here you have um, already a coupling between the fluid and the structure. Because the domain depends on the displacement of the structure and so may depend on time uh, when you have an unsteady problem like, like this one. But even if you have a, a steady state problem, then you will skip the time dependency there, but you will uh, uh, still have the dependency of the domain with respect to the displacement of the structure. So those are the equations we have for the fluid. You, sh you have so here is gamma zero, uh, the bottom of the cavity. And uh, for the structure, here I, I choose to, <coughs> to consider a beam equation. So eta is a transverse displacement of, of the structure. Uh, and um, it is turned out to, to, to set the structure equation in the reference domain. So what we are describing is the, are the displacement of each physical point of the reference configuration. So here the reference configuration is only... So this is a square, zero, one, but... <laughs> no? <laughs> Okay, 
So omega um, f is 0, 1 square. So this is the reference configuration of the fluid. And uh, the reference, uh, the equation of the structure are set in this uh, reference domain. So eta is the transverse displacement, rho s is the density of the fluid, and here you have um, the mechanical uh, part uh, of the beam equation. So here you have a, f uh, a second order operator um, because this is. Uh, a, beam, a beam equation, and here I add some damping terms, uh, and there will there will be helpful from from the mathematical point of view, uh, as as we will see uh, uh, afterwards. So, what are the coupling conditions between those two equations? So, first, what we can say is that we have two different kind of equations. The first one is a parabolic type equation. And the second one, if I skip this, those uh, viscous terms, additional viscous terms, are some hyperbolic um, equation. This one, uh, though these one are set in an unknown domain, depending on, on the displacement, and these ones are set in given domain, reference domain. So what are the coupling conditions between those two systems? The first coupling condition, which I will call the uh, geometrical nonlinearity, uh, comes from the fact that the uh, free domain depends on the displacement of the structure. So here I, quite, I, I can write it really easily because I assume that we have only a transverse displacement for the structure. So the free domain is easily described here. And as I said before, since the fluid is viscous, it sticks to the boundary and we have the equality of the velocity at the interface. But here, the fluid unknown uh, live in the deformed domain. And the structure unknown live in the reference domain. So to write this equality of the velocity, we have to um, map the fluid velocity onto the reference configuration in order to uh, write the equality of the velocity in the reference configuration. So this equality of the velocity is a nonlinear relation between u and eta. Okay? So you, you have several nonlinearities in this system. And for the force, so here you don't have exactly the um, equality of the normal component of the stress tensor at the interface, but since we have considered um, a reduced model for the, the elastic part, the uh, uh, force applied by the fluid on the structure uh, appears in the right-hand side of the structure equation. So Tf is the force ap applied by the fluid on the structure. And this um, force can be defined in this weak way. So here you have the stress tensor of the fluid. You have u, the velocity of the fluid, p, the pressure of the fluid. And so this equality, in fact, states that the, um, uh, the uh, balance of uh, the work at the interface between uh, um, so the, the transfer of energy and the interface between the fluid and the structure is, uh, is well balanced. So, um, so but, but you can also define Tf in a strong way. What you have to do is to um, map this quantity into the reference configuration. And so you will see appearing in this quantity, so n of t is the normal 
of the deformed configuration. So here you have nt, and here this normal will be equal to minus dx eta 1 over 1 plus dx eta. Okay, so here you have the full unsteady couple problem, which is uh, really nonlinear. So you have the geometrical nonlinearity, you have the equality of the velocity at the interface, you have this coupling, the force applied by the fluid on the structure, and you have, uh, I will say, parabolic hyperbolic coupling. Yes. Yes. The last question is a uh, force balance. Yes. And uh, the second definition of D as function of U. If, uh, Here, this is a symmetrized storm uh, saw. And if you see the definition of D. Yes. If um, one half of the gradient of U yes. plus the transpose of gradient of U, U is it is a linear relation. It's not for a large deformation. So if you come you, back you, one slide. Yeah, U is the velocity of the fluid. So this is not linked ah, to the okay. structure. Okay, yes. Okay. And here, yeah, you are right. Here I took a linear relation, linear behavior for the elastic structure. So this is a, f a, f a first step. This is not, uh, um, I will say, from the modeling point of view, this is not a, a right choice because, I, as I said before, we consider large displacement. So we shall consider uh, nonlinear behavior of the elastic structure. But <coughs> uh, for the time being, uh, I consider only uh, linear um, equation for the structure for the mathematical analysis and to simplify the presentation. But from the numerical point of view, to have some nonlinearity here okay. will um, will will not be the issue of of the of the presentation. So we assume that we cancel the fluid part. And the structure part, even if the structure part is nonlinear. Okay. Okay, but I will mostly focus on on the coupling. But you are right; the structure is linear, and uh, if we consider large displacement, we shall consider nonlinear behavior of the structure. But here, the large displacements are, in fact, in the dependency of the fluid domain with respect to the displacement of the structure. And uh, so this domain is unknown. We take into account the large displacement uh, in this model in the dependency. So we, we say that the displacements are so large that we cannot neglect them uh, in, in, in the fluid equations there. Okay, so you have uh, a few nonlinearities, so Navier-Stokes nonlinearity, geometrical nonlinearity, this coupling between the fluid and the structure, which is nonlinear, and uh, the equality of the, <coughs> the action-reaction principle. They have, there are some questions or on this model. So we will, I will work mostly on this model. Uh, so I will consider the steady state case, the unsteady case from the mathematical point of view. And next I will uh, also consider this kind of model f to, to present you some numerical schemes. Uh, for to in order to discretize um, in a stable and accurate uh, way uh, this kind of problem. So uh, yesterday Alberto uh, uh, told us a, a little bit of, about uh, 
boundary conditions. So here you have the, an inlet, and here you have an outlet. So you can assume first from the mathematical point of view that you have an enclosed cavity, so that you, the fluid velocity is equal to zero all over the boundary. Okay? So <coughs> from the physiological point of view, this is not really what you want to do if you consider blood flow in arteries, for instance. So we can also impose the Riclet boundary condition at the inlet if we have measurement of the velocity of, at, the, at, at some part of, of, the, <coughs> of, the of the domain. And we can also consider Neumann boundary conditions at the inlet or at, at the outlet. So the flow will be driven, if we consider Neumann boundary condition, the flow will be driven by the jump, the pressure jump. And <coughs> we can also uh, assume that we have other kind of uh, boundary conditions. So here, those are uh, mixed uh, Neumann uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions where you impose the fluid velocity to be uh, normal at the, at the inlet and at the, at the outlet. So, and as Alberto said uh, yesterday, uh, from the modeling point of view, uh, those kind of boundary conditions are, are not really representative of, of the um, physiology. So often you have to couple the fluid structure interaction problem with reduced models such as 0D or 1D model. But if you do so, so if you have the 3D model coupled to the 0D or 1D model, the coupling, um, <coughs> um, when considering the coupling of those two models, you have some Neumann boundary condition appearing. So the coupling uh, is made through Neumann boundary conditions. Because, for instance, if you have a, a zero, d uh, yes, so I will maybe explain that. So here, if you put some zero d models, a zero d model, the unknown are the, uh, the flux at the interface, so it will be this quantity and, and the, the average pressure at the interface. So two scalar quantities. So those are the, the unknown of the, of the zero D model or some 1D model. And so what, what you will, uh, um, how you will couple this 3D model and those zero D model is through Neumann boundary condition. We, you will apply this pressure to your uh, uh, fluid, fluid equations. So you will see some Neumann boundary conditions appearing. So studying the Neumann boundary condition makes sense, even in the wall setting 3D plus 0D or 1D. So The first question is, do we have some energy estimates for this kind of problem? Can we derive, at least formally, some, some energy estimates? So, what is the answer? Yes? Okay. <laughs> so maybe I will... So, can we derive energy estimates? 
So maybe I will go back to... So in order to derive energy estimates for, for this kind of problem, what, what we shall do, we multiply the Navier-Stokes equation, so the mass uh, the conservation of momentum, uh, the first equation, by the velocity u. So Navier-Stokes equation multiplied by u, integrate over the, the domain. So it gives us, we will take uh, rho equal one. So you have the acceleration of the fluid multiplied by u plus the convection term. So after integration by parts, the viscous terms gives you this quantity, so d of u is a symmetrized gradient of the velocity. Next, you integrate by part the gradient of p, minus p divergence of u. This term will be zero because u is divergent free. And you also have some boundary term coming from the integration, space integration by part, and the right minus t. Equal the external force. So the first remark here is that so here we have the dissipation of the fluid. Here, what, we, what you see appearing is exactly the term. This term will be equal. So u, I, I, to simplify, I take u equals zero on um, gamma in, gamma out, and gamma zero. So this term reduced only to the term on, <coughs> on, the, on the interface. And this term is exactly equal to the definition of the force applied by the fluid on the structure, so in the weak way. Now, why is that? So here, what you have is is exactly the integral over the reference configuration of the structure of this term, which is the force by the fluid on the structure, multiplied by the, the structure velocity. Okay, and here I use u of t x one plus f eta of t x equal zero eta t of x t. Okay? What I shall say maybe is that in this definition here, we have the test function v, and we have mapped 
the test function V that lives in the deformant configuration into the reference configuration. Once again, we have the difference between the freed and the structure, and this difference, so you have the freed is written in Eulerian coordinates, and whereas the structure is written in Lagrangian coordinates. So you have to map either the structure in the Eulerian, uh, in the deformed configuration, or the uh, freed in the, Lagrange, uh, the, the reference configuration. So here you use the equality of the velocity at the interface and the definition of the, uh, of the force applied by the freed on the structure. So this term will exactly compensate the term coming from the structure part if I multiply the structure equation by the st structure velocity. Okay? So I, we will see that right after, but here what you have. So usually when performing en energy estimates, so if you don't have this dependency of the domain with respect to the displacement of the structure, then this term, so here you make, uh, so Maybe I will write it down there. So usually you don't have this dependency on time and on the displacement. And what we write is that this term is exactly the time derivative of the kinetic energy of the fluid. Okay? But here, we, can do, we can't do this because of the time dependency of the, the domain. So here, if we want to make the kinetic energy of the fluid appearing, then you have, we have to do something. But Remember that we have the Navier-Stokes equation, and in the Navier-Stokes equation we have this convection term, and this convection term is exactly, it is obtained from the modeling point of view, um, it comes from the fact that we are following a, um, a time-dependent domain. So here, you, is the velocity of the, of, of the domain because of the equality of the, of, the, of the velocity at the interface. So this term is exactly equal to, I will write it like that. the time derivative of the fluid kinetic energy. So it comes from the following property that states that the time derivative of the integral over omega of t of uh, quantity k is equal to the integral of omega of the partial derivative with respect to t of k plus um, <coughs> a boundary term that writes um, k w n w the velocity of omega of t. So to obtain this, I, I, I use this transport theorem, okay? And in a way, this is, um, this is quite straightforward to obtain the derivative of the kinetic energy of the fluid 
because the convective term in the Navier-Stokes equation comes precisely from the derivation of the, do of the domain, of the free domain. So, maybe I... Oh, je perds ces trucs-là. J'ai perdu le truc. Do I need to prove this, this equality? Yes, no, no, yes. Non, vous dormez. <laughs> yeah? No? Yes? So maybe I, sh I should give an explanation before. This term can be written thanks to an integration by part like this. Uh, is it clear for everyone? So to make the link between this property and this equality, you have to write this term thanks to an integration by part. Why, why you have that? So, this term is equal, if I use uh, the Einstein convention on the repeated indices, you have this equality, and since you so it writes like this, and so I will keep the. And since U is divergence free, you can write it like this. So here. Because divergence of u equals zero, and so you can perform uh, an integration by part to obtain the boundary term. So this boundary term represents the flux of kinetic energy on the boundary. Okay, so <coughs> and here to use this transport theorem, I use the fact that the fluid domain moves at the fluid velocity because of the equality of the velocity at the interface. So, how to prove this property? So, proof of the transport theorem. So, this quantity will be equal to this one, where the mapping phi is the deformation mapping that maps a reference configuration onto, so this is it depends on time. And this is the flow associated to the uh, velocity uh, w. So it's satisfied. It can be chosen as the flow, at least at the interface. It's enough to have that only at the interface, not necessarily in the whole domain. And it will be used from the numerical point of view. So you write that like that, 
And so after you take the time derivative, you take the time derivative, you use the chain rule, and you use the fact that the time derivative of the determinant of the gradient of the deformation is equal to the divergence of the velocity w uh, composed with the deformation times the Jacobian of the deformation, so the determinant of the gradient of phi. And you have the, all the ingredients to prove this transport theorem. I have Yes. Yes. And uh, so the problem is, is it uh, can we consider it's the of the 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 you the you, you, you have only, uh, here you need only to have uh, u dot n equal to the the of the velocity. So you have o you, you, you only need to have the normal component of the velocity to be equal to the velocity at the interface. You, have zero, yeah. you could have a non-zero on the right-hand side, that's what you mean. Here? Yes. Um, you, you should have that the, the u dot n is equal to, uh, uh, u dot n is equal to the structure velocity at the interface. So, but there are some recent results, I think, uh, considering um, um, uh, slip, uh, slip Navier boundary conditions. So, here we can obtain uh, energy bonds, so, but we will obtain them assuming that we have either an enclosed cavity, so u equals zero on the boundary, which is not the free structure interface, or periodic boundary conditions at the inlet at, and at the outlet, or modified Neumann boundary condition at the inlet and the out, at the outlet. Why? Why, considering Neumann boundary conditions, we will not... So, I, I skip some... I skip the structure part, no? Yes. So, I didn't finish the energy bond. So, for the structure part... So now, for the free part, what you have? You have... The time derivative of the fluid kinetic energy, the dissipation of the fluid. Plus the boundary term um, plus the boundary term corresponding to the force applied by the fluid on the structure. Equal the, exter the, the work of the external force. So here I assume that u equals zero on gamma in, gamma out, and gamma zero. If we consider Neumann boundary condition, then what you what you have here, you have some additional term which write like that.
So we have we have two additional terms at the boundary, which are the flux of kinetic energy at the inlet and, and, and at the outlet, if we consider Neumann boundary conditions. Those two terms come from this, this term. Here, assuming that u equals zero on, on, on the boundary, uh, the, 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 the only term that is left is the term on the free structure interface. But if you don't consider u equals zero on the boundary, which is not the free structure interface, then you have two extra terms. And those extra terms r represent the uh, energy, is, uh, the kinetic energy entering the system. And those are quadratic terms. W you don't know their sign. Okay? So you have some energy that is coming into the system. And so if you consider Neumann boundary condition, you will not be able to have uh, energy estimates because of this energy entering the system. And from the theoretical point of view, you may have some trouble to prove existence of weak solution for existence, for instance, if you don't have energy estimates. And from the numerical point of view, to have energy entering the system that we are, you are not able to, to control may lead to some difficulties, and in particular, you may have some stability issues <coughs> coming from those Neumann boundary conditions at the inlet and at the outlet. So, for the structure, what is... So, you have the structure equation. And you multiply it by dt eta, and you integrate over so, the reference configuration of the structure and what you obtain, here you don't have any issue about the time dependent domain and stuff like that. So, what you obtain is the time derivative of the structure kinetic energy plus the time derivative of the mechanical energy of the structure uh, equal to the work of the applied forces plus the work of the forces applied by the fluid on the structure. And this term will exactly compensate the term coming from the fluid equation. So by adding the, the energy balance of the fluid and the energy balance of the structure, those two terms will cancel each other. Okay? And so what you will obtain is the time derivative of the fluid uh, kinetic energy, the time derivative of the structure kinetic energy, the dissipation of the plus the dissipation of the fluid, plus the time derivative of the um, uh, elastic energy. So I skip the dissipation term in, in the in the structure part. So I here I take uh, mu equals zero, and so if u equals zero all over the boundary, which is not the fluid structure interface, then you will have an energy balance. So from the mathematical point of view, to have an energy balance may, may enable us to prove existence of weak solution, for instance. And from the numerical point of view, you, we are sure that we have some boundness of the kinetic energy, of the dissipation of the fluid, and stuff like that. 
And so from the numerical point of view, we would like to recover this energy balance. And this energy balance com comes mostly from the fact that this term is equal to this one. So from the numerical point of view, one key point will be to ensure that this equality is still satisfied at the discrete level. Or if it's not satisfied, then you don't have uh, sporous energy coming into the system and that makes the system unstable. So that will be a key issue to have uh, uh, an energy balance at, at the interface. So, but when we consider um, Neumann boundary conditions, then we have these two additional terms that does not allow us to obtain energy estimates. And from the numerical point of view, it will be a, it may be um, a big issue. And in most of the numerical simulation I, I know, for, for instance, for blood flow, where you have those artificial boundaries because you are cutting, you are only considering one part of the system and you, are, you have some blood entering the system, so some external energy coming into the system you have to stabilize the energy coming into the system in order to obtain a stable scheme. So, and it, it comes really from the, the energy equality of the, of, of the, of the continuous uh, couple system. So, one way to avoid to have those two terms, if we consider Neumann boundary condition, it's to modify the pressure at the interface and to consider the total pressure. So it's to consider the pressure plus the kinetic energy of the fluid. And then by changing a little bit those um, boundary conditions, I say a little bit, but from the physiological point of view, it may, not, it may change the, a lot the profile of the velocity uh, at the interface. So from the mathematical point of view, uh, it will help us to obtain energy estimates. But from the numerical point, physiological point of view, what is the meaning of such boundary conditions? It's, it may change uh, a lot the velocity profile, so you may be uh, far from what you expect uh, uh, in, in reality. So, in these conditions, you have energy estimates, and with Neumann boundary conditions, you have no energy e estimates. So, so, here are the energy estimates you obtain. So, you obtain that U is bounded in. So, those are the standard space for the Navier Stokes equation. So U is in L infinity of L2, gradient of U is in L2 of L2, and eta is on those spaces. So first, those are the standard energy space, but here you have a time dependency, so they are not so standard. So the question is how to define properly, correctly, uh, these, these functional spaces. And here, if I consider um, uh, A equals zero, so a wave equation in, instead of a beam equation, I will only have uh, eta in H1 of zero one. So H1 of zero one, uh, eta will be continuous, but eta will not be Lipschitz if I consider only this line. So you will not have a Lipschitz domain for the fluid equation. So you may have trouble by considering that you have a wave equation coupled to the Navier-Stokes system, so a 2D Navier-Stokes system coupled to a 1D wave equation. 
you may have trouble to define properly uh, the domain, the trace of you on the domain, because the domain is not Lipschitz. The regularity of the domain depends on the regularity of the, dis of the, dis of the structural displacement. Uh, yes. It depends on you because it depends on Nita, and Nita depends on you. So you, you may hope to have an extra regularity coming from the freed parts. But the freed, the unknown are, are the velocity, not the displacement. So, and the displacement is a trace of the velocity, so you will lose some, some, some things, some regularity. So. Is it the case that you have this regularity, uh, on this regularization, you can uh, from the numerical point of view, you never make uh, the, the space, uh, the, the space um, uh, discretization parameter goes to zero. Uh, <laughs> so you don't, you don't really see this uh, appearing. In fact, because it, from the numerical point of view, you will have a Lipschitz uh, boundary. Yes, but David, you could see uh, something like something which is always Lipschitz, uh, but which. Uh in fact, in fact, from the numerical point of view, uh, you you have seen the the numerical simulation uh, Alberto showed us yesterday. Everything is quite smooth. The, the main problem for this problem uh, on um, so there is a problem uh, at the at the interface for the balance of energy so I will speak about that uh, later on but uh, you may also have instability because of the, the the amount of kinetic energy the 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 lack of regularity of the structural displacement um, I think we never saw it from the numerical point of view. But do you think that this smoothness uh, of the numerical is a numerical artifact or is inside the numerical artifact? Is there something that is a regularization that you can find? After, after what we can, pr in most of the case, so those are the bonds. Uh, we obtain thanks to the equality of uh, the balance of energy, okay? But you may have some existence of strong solution if the data are smooth enough. So in this case, if you have strong solution, you will not, you will not see anything. So my guess is that when, when, when the structural displacement is not regular enough, and so that you are not able to prove that you have existence of weak solution because you don't have enough regularity of the structural displacement, uh, you, you may be able to prove that uh, existence, of strong sol existence of strong solution, so for regular data. But and in fact, in the 3D, 3D case, or 2D, 2D case, when you have a uh, uh, 3D elastic structure coupled to a 3D uh, fluid, then the, the, the regularity of the displacement at, at the interface is even worse than that. So you have to consider strong solution in order to, to give sense to every term uh, in, in your problem. So you, you are not able to give sense to every term in your problem uh, in the 3D, 3D case, for instance, in a weak way. You have to consider some regular solution. Uh, it's H1, yeah, you are right. Yeah. If I, 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 I try to work in the energy space, I have a lack of regularity. I may have a lack of regularity in the energy space. From the numerical point of view, you are discretizing the displacement. So you are Lipschitz. So you have, you, you, 
in a way, you are regularizing your, your problem by discretizing it. You, you are not dealing with uh, PDE, but only ODEs when you are considering the numerical part. Yes, you have examples when you know that the solution is not soon, or that you are not able We are not, we are not able, we, in some cases we are, we are able, we or me or some, um, people are able to prove that they, there exists regular solution, but in some cases we, we are not able to prove existence. I don't know. <laughs> and my guess is that we are all... Uh, I, I think that we, we shall be able to prove that there exist solutions. Or this is not the, the right model. <laughs> so, the weak formulation. So what is the weak formulation with, for this kind of problem? So take a, um, a, a free test function and multiply the Navier-Stokes equation by this free test function and integrate by parts. So what you obtain is this first two, three. Uh, so those three terms coming from the Fried equation you will have some boundary term, once again, but those boundary, so coming from uh, the integration by parts of the viscous part and the integration by parts of the gradient of the pressure, uh, but those boundary terms will cancel each other if we choose a, um, a structural test function that match the free test function at the interface. So, and so the structure test function is B. And so here I, I choose three test functions that are divergent free. So you don't see the pressure anymore in the equation because I took uh, three test functions that are divergent free. And if I take uh, uh, three test function and structure set functions that match at the interface, you don't see the boundary terms uh, in, the, in the weak formulation. Okay, so this is a weak formulation, and here what you see is that this is not, not a standard uh, weak formulation, because here, in a standard uh, weak formulation, you can choose the test function to be independent of time, right? Because after you applied your favorite uh, Galerkin method and stuff like that, yes? But here, if I, choose to uh, cancel the boundary term at the interface, then I have to require that the free test function and the structured test function match at the interface. And this relation, so I, I may choose B not depending on time, but phi will depend on time because here I have the displacement of the structure which depends on time. So the free test function depends on time and depends on the solution, which is not quite standard. Yes? So you, you may have some trouble here because of this non-standard formulation for the weak formulation. And once again, it comes from the geometrical non-linearities uh, of, of, of the problem. Okay. So what are the mathematical and numerical difficulties? So you have a, a fully coupled and unsteady uh, nonlinear system. Uh, nonlinear because of the convection term, because of the geometrical nonlinearities, and maybe because of the structure behavior law. Here I, I took a linear behavior law, but in real life, you should take some nonlinear um, <coughs> behavior law. You may have a an hyperbolic parabolic coupling, so you may have um, um, a gap between the regularity of the fluid and the regularity of the structure. 
In particular, the regularity of the structure velocity is not, may not be guaranteed by the structure equation. So what you obtain are, so if you don't take this additional viscous term, what you obtain are some regularity of the, of the displacement. For the velocity, you have a, a really little. The velocity is in L infinity of L2 only. So, and so you may have some troubles to deal with this hyperbolic uh, parabolic coupling. You may have also to deal, at least from the mathematical point of view, to, to deal with the lack of regularity of the, the interface displacement, because uh, if this displacement is not regular enough, you should look to strong solution or to define a, to, to define a way to, to, to define properly all the terms appearing in your system. And you have also this incompressibility constraint, which is rather uh, a problem in this kind of couple system. And we will see why also. So, first I will try to, um, to review some of the difficulties that may appear from the mathematical point of view when considering the existence of weak solution or strong solution. So first I will um, consider a steady-state problem. So in the steady-state problem, you um, eliminate uh, a lot of the difficulties of the problem, and the, 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 main, difficulties that, the main difficulty that remains in the problem is the nonlinear um, um, geometrical part. Okay, because, so we will see. So, it will answer to the question how to deal with this uh, geometrical uh, nonlinearity. So we will try to, uh, um, or, uh, to, to. I will try to show you how to prove existence of strong solution for for this uh, steady state uh, free bin interaction problem. Next, uh, I will present you some uh, results on. Uh, existence of uh, weak or strong solution for the full and steady problem uh, and uh, show you the difficulty and the way one can uh, overcome them. But I, I will not review all the uh, theoretical results that exist, but just try to point out what are the difficulty and how we can uh, solve them. And uh, I will try to make the link between the numerical analysis. And um, first, I will uh, present you the ALE strategy that uh, Alberto uh, um, uh, uh, has uh, shown us yesterday. But I will try to explain uh, this strategy. And this ALE strategy is linked to the uh, motion of the free domain. So this is really linked to the first point, the uh, geometrical nonlinearity here. So next I will um, uh, speak about stability issues and uh, in particular what is called the added mass effect. And this added mass effect comes from the incompressibility constraint, really. So. And I will present some numerical scheme, uh, implicit one, explicit one, semi-implicit one, and discuss the stability and uh, accuracy properties. And try to make the link between those schemes, the strategy to discretize the problem, and the strategy of proof. Because here you have seen that uh, the um, the problem is non-linear, so the, f the first idea is to perform fixed points. 
from the numerical point of view, you solve the fleet, you solve the structure, and you, you perform also fixed point or Newton method and stuff like that. So you have iterations. And so I will try to make the link between those two questions. So, uh, from the mathematical analysis, so here I review some of the, um, uh, I, I think not, not all of them, but so there are many, many results on the uh, existence of weak or strong solution for, for this kind of problem. So there, there is a huge uh, literature on uh, existence of strong solution for Navier-Stokes equation coupled to rigid bodies. So when you consider rigid bodies, uh, the difficulties are quite the same, except that you have ODE, so to describe the evolution, the motion of the rigid body. You, have, you don't have PDEs, you have ODEs, because uh, the motion of the rigid bodies are described by a finite uh, number of degree of freedom, translation and rotation. So, uh, in a way, um, this is more simpler than the coupling between PDE and PDE. But still, we still have some non-linearities. So, there are a lot of paper concerning uh, this uh, question. Concerning, uh, so uh, the Navier-Stokes equation coupled with a plate inflection or a, a beam inf uh, inflection, you, you have two results and I will present uh, briefly the results of uh, Julien Lecoeur for uh, the Navier-Stokes equation, the 2D Navier-Stokes equation coupled to the uh, 1D beam, a viscous 1D beam. So. Here, to prove existence of strong solution, you have to consider some additional viscosity on, on, on the beam. Otherwise, the strategy of proof doesn't work. Um, so, concerning the Navier-Stokes equation coupled to a 3D uh, nonlinear uh, elastic system, you have uh, results in the steady state case. And you have results in, in the unsteady states case uh, in all of this. So this is the complete uh, system with all the nonlinearity considering a 3D fluid coupled to a 3D structure. Those results are valid for small time and small data with a lot of uh, compatibility condition on the data, and in particular on the initial data, on initial pressure and stuff like that. So a lot of, I would say, uh, on physic and physical compatibility conditions. On so, and and th this those paper there are two, are just awful to read. <laughs> Uh, those two are, are, are some simplification of this paper, but in special cases where, for instance, the interface is flat and you have a periodic boundary condition at the inlet and at the outlet. And concerning the existence of weak solution, you have also um, a lot of results, mostly in the rigid body case. Uh, in all these results, you assume that the rigid body uh, that do not uh, collide. Collide. Um, except in this paper, where uh, they uh, prove existence of a weak solution after con contact, so they give a sense to the weak solution after contact. And the, uh, after contact, the solids uh, evolve and they are stick together. So this is not a really physical solution, but this is a mathematical solution. Uh, so concerning elastic media, you have results with a finite uh, uh, number of eigenmonds. So you uh, 
project the elastic equation on a finite number of eigenmodes. And so you have uh, to deal with a uh, Navier-Stokes equation coupled to a system of ODE. So it simplifies a lot the analysis, and the analysis is really close to uh, the rigid bodies analysis. And you have results for a plate inflection with uh, viscosity, additional viscosity, without additional viscosity. And recently you had some results for coiter shell. And even, uh, so the last one here, this is, ah, this submitted paper, I think it's for um, nonlinear coiter shell. Um, and those two, uh, w one of them is also for non-Newton flow uh, coupled to a coiter shell. So, maybe I will. Yes. So, if you have questions. 